you're going to hear the word then at end, which means the same thing as partners, okay? And remember it has add in it, which helps us remember that we should add them. And the top number is called the sum in adding and subtracting. Next word. From this. Just like we've been doing in multiplication and division, if you're better at multiplication, you can write your equation with an unknown number in the multiplication equation to figure out your division answers. Same here. We could write it as a subtraction, starting with our sum and then subtracting whatever add end, Leo. Or we can write it like an adding equation with a missing number. And we could even put our total here and put the missing number on this side. Lots of ways that you can write the equation. All right, ready? What does it say? Greta put some beads on a string. So right away, we don't know how many beads we're starting with. That's why it would be an unknown number. Start. Yes, exactly. And how did you know then? If you started, Alex, with 110, take away 30, how did you know the 110 was going to be the top of your math mountain? Because it's the total. Because it's the total. And the total is always... How do you one on top. It's always one on top. And how can you tell in your problem, if you have 110, 30, and 80, how do you know right away that 110 must be the total? Because it's the biggest, and the biggest always goes on the top. Yep, yeah, your total is always going to be the largest number. Excellent work. Okay, um, and your final answer with your label is what? 80 booklets. 80 booklets. So, here, these math mountains and equations match the story that we just were reading. Here are two different types of equations we can write. We can write a situation equation, say those words. Situation equation. Or we can write a solution equation, say those words. Solution equation. And after we go through these, you can probably think through what kind of equation did you write on the back side of the page. Here's the difference. If it's a situation, I'm going to wait for a few eyes to be right here. If it's a situation equation, the equation tells the story just like you heard it. So watch how this one matches the story. Greta had some beads on a and then she put on 70 more. And now she has 130. So Dorian, this equation tells the story in order. When the equation tells the story, it's called a situation equation. Now sometimes we might not put the equation that matches the story exactly because we might have just looked at the math mountain and said, you know what, it's easier for me to add and think about the missing number. I like to do that kind of math, so I'm going to do 70 plus what equals 130. That's what Sheila and Jocelyn both did, and they chose to count by tens to figure out the missing number. number. But this, if we say 70 plus how many more equals 130, that doesn't tell the story the way the story was written. Um, and this one doesn't either. 130 take away 70. That was not the story. The story was not that I had 130 beads and she took off 70. That was not the story. So these equations, will they get you to the right answer? Yes. Yeah. They just don't match the story, so we call those solution equations. Yes. So let's just review a little bit. We did a break apart drawing here, but we know break apart drawings, that terminology has shifted a little bit over the years. What did we first learn before break apart drawings? Dominic. Math Mountains. Math Mountains. And who were our little people on the Math Mountains? Ty Tiny Tumblers. Tiny Tumblers, exactly. How many of you actually remember that? Tiny tumblers. I think I would remember that too. That's a good little trigger. Then we shifted. We kind of matured. We got a little bit older and we started talking about not math mountains and tiny tumblers, but something else. Good. So we did partner, partner, total. Excellent. So we did partner, partner, total. Then we started getting a little older. 
And then what did we start to use? Really? Break apart drawings. We did break apart drawings. Do you remember what they called them? Did they call them partner? Partner total? Add and, add and, stop. Right. So look at all that shifting we did. Are we still talking about the same thing? Yeah. We are. But we just kind of worked on different terms that we thought would be easiest for you to understand as you were getting older. So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about that language that we use when we are trying to decide whether we're going to be adding as our operation or whether we're going to be subtracting as our operation. So who can refresh our memory a minute about what problems that put a little light bulb in our mind and say, oh, I think I'm going to be adding here. Um, um someone to say how much or how much money is all together, or how much, or how much is this number and this number together? Okay, so I heard you say how much all together, or how many all together. Go ahead. The tree has a lot of leaves. 346 leaves grow up. Now the tree has 587 leaves left. How many leaves do we have to begin? So Andrew, can you walk us through what we would have to do in order to solve that problem. You can kind of show us what you did at the top. Solve the problem, so you don't know the total. So you have to take the number of leaves that fell off and add them to the leaves that are left. It's 933 leaves then as the total. Okay, good. But thanks for showing us that. So you'll notice sometimes when you're structuring your word problem, it's trickier than actually solving it on paper. I was just saying that to another adult, that sometimes when you are actually taking an assessment or you're taking a quiz or you're working on your homework and the problem is already laid out for you, it it makes more sense. You're just having to decide which operation you use. But when you have to write the word problem, that's the tricky part, okay? But there's a reason we do the tricky part. Does anybody think they know why? Hudson? So you can learn them and understand? You actually will learn, you will understand more when you have to structure the problem yourself, okay? situation and solution equations and we're going to be um, making some break apart drawings for um, to, as a tool on how to show how these work. Right, so our, our sapling, what's a sapling? A tree, right? Our tree grew to be 60 inches tall, okay? Um, or we want it to grow to be 60 inches tall. How tall is it right now? And what is our question? How many inches must it grow? grow? Okay, so our total that we wanted to get to is 60. 60. So on our break apart, pro break apart problem, what's going to be at the top? 60. 60. Okay. What's happening in our situation? We're starting with what? 58 and a 4. We're adding how much? How much is the tree going to grow? 5. Do we know? How much is it going to grow? This is where it's starting. It's going to grow a certain amount, right? So what are we going to put if we don't know how much it's going to grow? A variable. A variable. So let's use an end. Okay? And what's our total that we want it to get to? 60. 60. Okay? So we've got 58 and a fourth plus some amount to get to our total of 60. Right? In our break apart problem, what do we have at the top? What always goes at the top? The total. The total. Okay. So what are the other parts going to look like? So 58 or 60. Yep. And then what's going to go over here? Question. Yeah, question mark or? Variable. The variable n, right? That's the part we are missing. Okay. So how do we solve it? 
how do we figure out the missing part? This kind of describes the situation. We're starting here, we're adding a certain amount that we don't know, and we're trying to get to 60. How do we solve that? What would the solution equation look like? Can you quickly talk with your partner about it? In this problem, you guys, you could actually solve it with the situation equation if you want to kind of count on, right? Can you say again, will you go up and say again what you just said? And then I'll have Lily show us her way. Do you understand what you said? Yeah. So you could count on, you know that you need another three fourths to get to 59, and then from 59 to 60. Do you want to show us how you did it by subtracting? Yeah. 